What's going on, everybody? As you can see, we finished another dynamic service. It was unusual. We talked from the subject title, Numbers Can Lie. I didn't make a mistake because many times numbers suggest things to us that are contrary to the will and word of God. It happened for Gideon. Gideon was reduced to 300 men. Yet God gave Gideon victory because God was for him. And I want to encourage you to check out the message in the moment in its entirety. As always, thank you for your commitment, for your support, for liking, for sharing, for commenting. I want to thank everyone who has joined Evangel Nation, who's become a part of the family and part of the move. You are making a difference, helping us to fulfill the great commission for the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to encourage you this week, walk in truth and know that your circumstance can't overcome God's confidence and God's promise to you. God bless you. Peace. We'll see you soon. I want to read from Judges chapter 7, verse 4 through 7. I'm going to read from the CEV version. Again, Judges chapter 7, verse 4 through 7. And I want you to open your ears to hear what the Spirit has to say. Judges chapter 7, verse 4 through 7. It reads like this. It says, Gideon the Lord said, you still have too many soldiers. Take them down to the spring and I'll test them. And I'll tell you which ones can go along with you and which ones must go back home. When Gideon led his army down to the spring, the Lord told him, watch how each man gets a drink of water. Then divide them into two groups, those who lap the water like a dog and those who kneel down to drink. 300 men scooped up water in their hands and lapped it, and the rest knelt to get a drink. The Lord said, Gideon, your army will be made up of everyone who lapped the water from their hands. Send the others home. I'm going to rescue Israel by helping you and your army of 300 defeat the Midianites. I, I, I want to I just take a few moments to talk from the subject title, Numbers Do Lie. Numbers Do Lie. Numbers Do Lie. Look at somebody say, Numbers Do Lie. No, I believe sometimes we miss the point of what God is trying to work out in our lives. No, there was, was a story about a man who had an assignment to push the rock. And over years, he became frustrated because it seemed like the rock just wouldn't move. And like many of us, he began to grow weary and well-doing because how many people know when you're pushing and you don't see results, it causes you to want to throw in the towel. It causes you just to wave your white flag and say enough is enough, no mas. No mas. It, it, it makes you say that. But God comes back and responds to the man and says, I didn't call you to move the rock. I just called you to push the rock. Because while you were pushing the rock, the rock was developing something on the inside of you. While you were pushing the rock, have you looked at yourself lately? You have muscles that you didn't have before. While you were pushing the rock, you learned how to pray. While you were pushing the rock, you learned how to fast. While you were pushing the rock, you learned how to seek God. While you were pushing the rock, you know, you learned how to budget. While you were pushing the rock, and sometimes the objective is not to move the rock. Sometimes God is using the rock to shape you. And so Israel is facing a rocky situation that seems like it won't move. In fact, they are in a cycle. They disobey God again and again. And every now and then God will turn them over into the hands of their enemy. And so they have been under the attack of the Midianites for about seven years. But for whatever reason, this particular year, God wanted it to be different. And I came to say prophetically to you that this is going to be a different year for you as well. 
In fact, Gideon had been impacted by lies. He had a number complex. In fact, Gideon, when the angel of the Lord comes to find him while he's threshing wheat in the wine press, he communicates to him that I am from the smallest tribe and I'm from the least of these. He, he felt that God couldn't use him because of the way he measured up statistically. But I came here to remind you that numbers do lie. Uh, this was Gideon's response. And if you're going to fight the enemy, the father of lies, it's important that you need truth. Because the result of lies is fear. Fear is false evidence appearing real. And so Gideon began to believe the lies based upon what he saw. And as a result, it created a feeling that God never intended for him to have because the scriptures remind us that God has not given us the spirit of fear, but the power of love and a sound mind. And so God begins to break down Gideon's army. In fact, God begins to communicate to him the criteria he's going to need to be a part of what would come known as the 300. The first step was he got rid of everybody that was afraid. Everybody that had fear. Everybody had fear. And fear is just seeing evidence. That is unreal and mistaking it for being real. And the Bible says that he sends them home. I'm glad he doesn't send them to their doom, but he sends them home. Home is not a bad place. But what God understands is that fear is the worst type of disease. That fear is contagious. And that's why in this season, you can't hang around with people that are scared, that are afraid. If you're scared, just say you're scared. But for this season, while we're trying to do something great from God, we may have to separate ourselves so that we can fulfill the assignment that God has on our life. Because every now and then, he will separate people based upon their posture and their fear. Because fear will rob you of faith. And this is why it's important that God teach Israel this lesson because God will never test what he hasn't taught. And so God has prepared them for this moment. But God is teaching Israel that numbers do lie. And I don't know about you, but some of you are looking at your circumstances even on this morning and you're like, Pastor, I hear what you're saying, but this giant that I'm facing is too big. But I want you to know that numbers do lie. Let me give you three ways you will know if numbers are lying to you. I, I'm going to give you three ways you know that numbers are lying to you. First of all, numbers are lying to you when things don't seem to add up. That's when numbers are lying to you. It was Gideon's army who knew that they were God's chosen people. They were God's covenant people, but they were experiencing defeat. Watch this at home. It wasn't a land that was being attacked that God did not give them. It was a land that was supposed to be their promise. And it wasn't adding up. How is this supposed to be my dream? But it feels more like a nightmare. Things were not adding up. And when things are not adding up, as a chance, the numbers are lying to you. You know, Pastor, I've given everything I have, and it seems like I can't get ahead. It seems like the numbers are lying to me. You know, it seems like I'm blessed, but when I look at my bank account, it seems like the numbers are lying to me. And, and watch this. It doesn't seem like it adds up because it seems like if you bless me some 30, some 60, some 100, four, I should have more than what I have right now. But it seems like things are not adding up. Isn't it when we grow discouraged, when we feel like things are not adding up, we're giving our best. And it seems like God has given us his worst because it seems like things are not adding up. Another way you know numbers are lying, now I'm almost to my seat, is that the enemy counts you out. That's how you know the numbers are lying. When it seems like there's no way you can overcome or conquer the enemy. And watch this. The enemy does not even see you as a threat because he's already counted you out based upon 
the numbers. You don't have enough money. You don't have enough education. You don't have enough relationships. And it seems like he's counted you out because the numbers are lying to you. And so what God is trying to encourage Gideon to do is get beyond the numbers. Numbers represent a circumstance that is contrary to what God has spoken. Here's here's the third way you know numbers are lying to you. (laughs) It's when God is for you. That's how you know numbers are lying to you because it was never God's intention that we depend upon numbers. Numbers represent outside circumstances. The Bible says in Romans 8 and 31 that if God be for us, then who can be against us? Watch this. He wants us to put more trust in the name than the numbers. I got two believers to hear me. I say in this season, you've got to put more trust in the name than the numbers. I want to remind you, this scripture has been on my heart all year. Some trust in horses, some trust in chariots, but we will put our trust in the name of God. Some of you are discouraged because the numbers don't look right, but I promise you, if you begin to exalt the name, what is wrong will become right because God is faithful. If you put more trust in the name than the numbers, I need you to take the next 10 minutes just to open your mouth and give God some sure enough praise yeah so watch this the numbers are lying to you the numbers are lying to you that's what I want you to know Um, because Abraham and Sarah they wondered if they could conceive because the numbers were lying to them you know the songwriter said I know it didn't age well but age ain't nothing but a number he they were looking at how old they were Abraham was pushing 100 Sarah was in her 90s and they said there's no way we're gonna be able to conceive because the numbers are nine lying to us and I came in a prophecy out of somebody I don't care how old you are I don't care how many years have passed if God spoke it he will bring that baby into fruition you know David um, they saw but before David the Israelites saw the giants and they start looking at them and they took out their measuring stick and they start realizing that these men are taller than us these men are bigger than us and watch this, it changed the way they saw themselves. They began to see themselves as grasshoppers because they allowed the numbers to lie to them. How many times does numbers change our identity and the way we see ourselves? But I came here to prophesy to you that numbers are lying. I think you have to understand that even when they came back and they got the reports that it was 10 out of 12 that said we can't go in. And only two said that we're well able to overcome because even though they were the majority, the majority was lying because numbers do lie. I love Jonathan, his adjutant said, the Lord can deliver by many or by little, but the Lord will deliver. Jonathan got free from numbers. Watch this, I love even in Judges, we see that God delivers by different scenarios. In fact, Deborah and Baraka, um, they have thousands, while Samson, God used one person. And so the truth of the matter is, God was showing that numbers really don't matter when I'm in the middle of a situation and a circumstance. And I came here to remind this church called Evangel, I know God's been good to us, I know God has made ways, but the truth of the matter is that the reason we've experienced victory yesterday, the reason we're going to experience victory today and the reason we'll experience victory tomorrow is because we have put our trust in God and God is for us look at somebody say God is for you and then we see the lad the lad he's dealing with the circumstance where there are 5,000 people that need to be fed and he offers God two fish and five loaves of bread because the numbers were saying that there's not enough to supply for our needs but God took what seemed small and made it much because the numbers were lying. And I came here to release this prophetic 
were. Because some of us feel like we can't pass the test or win the battle because of the numbers that have seemed to be lying to us. But if God is in it, then God wouldn't have sent you to battle if he didn't know you were all going to win. And so on today, as the musicians are playing, I'm about to shift this thing. Because this is what I felt the Spirit of the Lord saying. Because I struggled with what to share, even though I had many words. I wanted to make sure that I was accurate on this morning. And God told me there's got to be a shift in our mindsets. He said, this is why we're in this season of prayer. Because I'm trying to raise the people's level of expectation. Watch this. Gideon was placed in the scriptures for our edification. For our development. Because some of us are facing some mountains that we can't seem to overcome. But I want you to know that the numbers are lying. And let me say this. That some of you are facing some circumstances that have kept you stagnant. That have kept you stuck. And I believe this morning, God is going to take the restrictions off. Because out of all the things the Holy Spirit is called, he's called the spirit of truth. And the way you beat a lie is with the truth. And I believe in this season, God's going to work some miracles that don't make sense to the natural eye. God's going to move some people and places that people would be surprised and shocked that they would even enter those doors because of the favor that's about to hit our house. And so God told me to do this on the day I believe. You judge it. On today, I'm going to ask everybody, as the musicians play, I want to ask everybody who's here this morning, who's facing some circumstances. I'm going to ask you to move out of your seat right now. This thing to be restricting you. Your circumstances seem to be lying to you and telling you things are not going to get better. Your circumstances keep lying to you and making you feel that God has abandoned you. Your circumstances keep lying to you and causing you to feel hopeless. Come on, give me more of what you gave me on Friday. I need it strong today. Give me some warfare music. Give me some victorious music. Come on, come on, we're we about to push. 
We're about to push. I know it seems like the rock won't move, but God's about to develop something on the inside of you. I know it doesn't make sense to you right now, but God's about to stir something up. God's about to bring somebody out. I want you just for the next 30 seconds, right where you are. We're not going to be religious, but we're going to ask God to show himself strong. I want you just to begin to open your mouth. Come on, I want you to act like you at a Friday night prayer meeting. And you need God to move like never before. I want you to block out your wife. I want you to block out your children for a few moments. And I want you to go after God. In every lie the enemy's been speaking to you, I want you to open your mouth and begin to declare the truth. scriptures he said you're in this battle but for those that have been walking in alignment with God's will he told me to tell you it's not your fault secondly he told me to tell you it's not your fight and what he told me to tell you the way you're going to come out is going to be a result of your faith. And your faith can handle whatever you're facing. Yes, sir. The enemy made you think that the lies were true. But the lies have come from the enemy himself. And watch this. God told Israel, he said, I'm going to give you the victory give you the victory I'm gonna give you the victory I'm gonna give you what everybody else is working for can I prophesy to somebody on this morning your next victory is gonna be a gift See, I can tell the people that believed it because the old saints just say something like this. The Lion of Judah will break every chain and give to us the victory again and again. Watch this. I'm trying to help you. Everything that was created in the earth, God created it by faith. 
y'all hear what I'm saying before there was a moon there was faith before there was a sun there was faith before there was birds there was faith before there was a giraffe there was faith everything that God created in the earth before there was an ATM and money there was faith And James reminds us that this test is after your faith. The reason you've gone through hell and high waters is because the enemy is trying to snatch your faith. And I want to say this to this house, that we're not just after any type of faith. We're after childlike faith. I didn't say childish faith I said childlike faith where we believe God for the impossible and watch this the battle you're facing you're not going to win it without faith why don't you touch somebody get your faith up 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 Pastor, it's been a long time, but can your faith wait? I said, can your faith wait? Does your faith mind waiting? The Bible says that without faith and patience, you don't inherit the promise. Pastor, pastor, why is the enemy fighting me? And how do I fight on back? You fight on with your, you fight on with your faith. fight them with your faith. Hold on one second, one second, one second. We fight them with our faith. Faith. So watch this. He sends Gideon to war. He says, listen Gideon, I want you to get a jar. I want you to get a trumpet. And I want you to get a torch. He said, take all 300 men. Now watch this. He uses a jar. And many theologians believe the torch was put inside the jar so that they could approach the enemy's camp being undetected. And I came here to tell you that God will use hidden things. That the reason people have overlooked you, people haven't seen you, it's because God has hidden you and he wants to ensure that the enemy does not see you coming so that's point one and then an order for them to be able to fight and to draw the attention to the war they took out their trumpet and the Bible says that they blew their trumpet which is a sign of warfare This is why the enemy is after your praise because your praise represents your breath. You can't blow a trumpet without breath. And I came in to tell you that when you open your mouth and give God praise, you sound an alarm. And I want to remind you also that they had a jar because God uses broken things. They had to break the jar to get the light out. And God said, I'm going to use you with all of your imperfections, with all of your brokenness. He says, the reason I'm going to use you broken is because I get more glory out of your life. And light light can shine better out of broken things. So there's a shift coming. And right now, We want to seal it with prayer. We want to seal it with prayer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Broken things. 
this is the crazy thing about it. That even though Gideon takes the trumpet, he takes a torch, and he takes the jar. Notice what Gideon does not take. He doesn't take a sword. Wow. How do you go to warfare without a sword? Let me say this prophetically, that God is gonna use some bizarre things to give you victory in this next season. Because the numbers have been lying. And we declare the truth on this morning. So would you tell the truth with me? Truth is that we're healed. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we're healed. The truth is we're victorious. Because whatever's born of God overcomes the world, even our faith. The truth is we're forgiven. The truth is the devil's defeated. Yes, sir. The truth is the weapon may form, but the weapon won't prosper. The truth is, even though I feel like I'm failing, now unto him that's able to keep me from falling and to present me faultless. The truth is, the truth is, even though I feel, feel like I hit my end and I hit my ceiling, now unto him that's able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think according to the power that worketh in me. The truth is, it's not my end. God's about to give me a new beginning. The truth is I'm not too old. The truth is I'm just mature enough to walk in the season God has for me. The truth is, the truth is, the truth is, I may not have enough money, but I got more than enough favor. The truth is, I need you to start speaking truth over your life. The truth is, my children may be lost, but they're great candidates to be found. The truth is, the truth is, Come on, I tell you to talk back to every lie that's been lying to you. The truth is, yes, my daddy died from this, my granddaddy died from this, but the truth is, God is breaking every generational curse on my life. The truth is, the truth is, the truth is. The truth is, I might have been dealing with this addiction for a long time, but today is about to be the best day of my life. This is about to be the first day of the rest of my life. The truth is. I need somebody to clear truth. I need somebody to clear truth. The truth is I might feel abandoned. But when my mother and father forsake me. That's when the Lord will lift me up. The truth is. 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 I might feel broke. But my father owns the cattle on a thousand hills. The truth is. Because somebody said, I'm not going to let the devil lie to me another day in my life. And I came in to prophesy to you that whatever he told you, believe the opposite. That's the truth. The truth is, I won't be single for the rest of my life. Somebody just hasn't found me yet. Because a man that finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains a favor from the Lord. The truth is, even if I'm single, I'm not alone. But he promised never to leave me, nor forsake me. That's the truth. Come on, I need you to open your mouth. I know this is different. I know this is different. But you've been praying for a different move. You've been praying for God to do something out of the ordinary. You've been praying for God to blow your mind. And now that he's giving you an opportunity to do something unusual, you've been treated back to the norm. But the devil is a liar and a deceiver too. This is about to be a season of breakthrough. Look at somebody say, I'm a breakthrough giver. This is our season of breakthrough. We're not going to break down. We're not 
going to retreat because God is with us. And because God is with us, we're about to make some forward progression. I need somebody to say, we're about to break out. We're about to break out. We're about to break out. I need somebody for the next 10 seconds to turn this Sunday morning service into a Sunday morning revival and get what you need from the Lord. What generation has the juice? I'm not saying what generation got the juice. Because some of you want to be blessed, but you got to have a Jacob moment that says, I won't let go until you bless me. And this is what I think. I think you can't allow the gray hairs to deceive you. I believe there are some people that want God with all of their heart. So I'm going to see what generation got the juice. If you 20 years and under and you won't let go until God blesses you, I want you to open your mouth. Oh, that generation don't got the juice. Let me, let me try somebody else. Come on. If you're 30 and under, and you won't let go until God blesses you. I want you to open your mouth. Listen. If you're 40 and you know it's just half time. And you won't let go until God blesses you. I want you to open your mouth and give God some. 40 and under. I'm gonna skip up 20 years. Now let me go ahead and skip up 30. If you're 70 and under, and you said, Pastor, I've had some hills to climb, I've had some valleys to go through, but I just made up in my mind, I'm gonna be like Joshua and Caleb and say, I still want my mountain and I won't let go until he blesses me. I want you to open your mouth and give God. for your victory but you're going to fight from your place of victory the reason I felt a grace to shake it up this morning because you've been doing good but God didn't call you to be good he called you to be great 